Yes, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, my dear students. If your notes are not up to date, like the notes you are using, or you don't have the notes yet, there is a link below in the description. There is a link below. For that link, you will be able to access these notes so that you can prepare yourself. Let's look at a blood grouping. Blood grouping. Do you know your blood type? All right. Different blood groups are as a result of multiple alleles. When you talk about an allele, we say that it is an alternative form of a gene. For example, let me talk about height. For example, you might be tall or you might be short. You have the allele for tallness or you have alleles for shortness. So it means that if it is um, a character, a character is height, but this height has two alternative forms. The gene is height, but has two alternative forms of it, whether you are tall or you are short. So that's what we say that allele. So it is an alternative form of a gene. But now when you say multiple alleles, it means that it's more than two. So blood group, it is controlled by multiple alleles. It has more than two alleles. Three or more alternative form of a gene, that is the allele, yes, you have a gene, but it can exist in different forms, yes, that can occupy the same locus. That's what called the multiple allele. Three or more alternative form of uh, a gene uh, that can occupy the same locus. When you say locus, locus is the location of the gene on the chromosome. So it is the same location of the gene on the chromosome, but you have different uh, or multiple or many alleles in that uh, location. So you're saying that, however, only two of the alleles can be present in a single organism. Why should it be two? It's because you have two parents you have the father and you have the mother so one allele must come from the father and one allele must come from the mother the alleles the father has and the alleles the mother has so the, the one of it will come from uh, each parent and then they combine so that they form your alleles so that's the meaning that however two of the alleles must be present in the, a single organism for example, if you look at a blood group, you have the what called the phenotype, and you have the what called the genotype. The phenotype sometimes it is the blood type or the blood group, the blood group that is the phenotype. What you see, because when I ask you which type of blood group are you or do you have, or you say I have blood group A, so that is the, the, what what we can see at least, because phenotype means. The, 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 what is outside and then a genotype but what is the composition of that blood group a is it homozygous or it's heterozygous so that is what called the, the, the genotypes you are describing your blood group in terms of genes the kind of genes you do have so we are saying that you have blood group a you have blood group b you have blood group a b and blood group o blood group a can be um, in two different ways. You can be homozygous or you can be heterozygous. Homozygous, homo means the same. So when you say homozygous, it means that um, you have the same kinds of alleles. You have this A and A, you see? And then in heterozygous, you have this A, which is the dominant and then a recessive one. Blood group B also has two uh, kinds of uh, genotypes. You have homozygous blood group B, it is the same kind, or oh, it has um, heterozygous. Hetero means different. Then you have blood group AB. This one, uh, it only has one option, which is AB. And this is a uh, core dominant, whereby the two alleles are exp. Uh, expressed uh, equally in the phenotype. And then um, you see your blood group O. Blood group O also has um, one option that is uh, uh, two recessive alleles. So it means that if you, you, you have a blood group O, it means that you have a recessive allele for blood type. 
Now, you need to know this. You need to understand this before you go for your exam. When they say blood group A, these are the, which, how many, they can ask you a question. How many uh, phenotypes do blood groups have? You have how many phenotypes? One, two, three, four. There are four. How many phenotypes? There are four. How many alleles? How many alleles controlling blood group? You see, it's being controlled by three blood group, allele A, allele B, and allele the small i. So those are the three. How many genotypes do we have in blood group? You have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six. So the genotypes, there are six. The phenotypes, there are four. And then alleles, there are three. We're going to look at that one in detail. So we are saying that blood groups, you have A, you have B, you have AB, and you have O. Um, this, these blood groups are being determined by the, the red blood cells. So which kind of antigens or antigens do you have? So you see that blood group B, blood group A has this kind of antigen, blood group B has this kind of antigen, blood group AB you have this kind of antigen, blood group O you have this kind of antigen. So this one makes which blood group, who donates to who and who receives from who. So because of this kind of antigen, if it is not compatible, then it means that you can't receive or you can't do it. That's why blood group O, it can donate to anyone. Why? Because it doesn't have uh, the recognition sites. And then blood group AB, it can receive from anyone. Why? Because it has both for this one and then this from this. So it can receive from anyone. Why? Because it has the universal uh, receptors. All right. So we're saying that alleles A, B and R in different combination results in four different uh, blood groups. That's what I've explained here, that you have four different blood groups. You have A, B, A, B, and O. So you have three alleles. The first one is A, the second one is B, and the third one is I, small i. These alleles must be written like that. Don't modify the writing. Don't shed it. Don't put an O. Some people, when they are writing, they write I, and then they put a small O on the top. That's not I. It must be I and a dot on top. You have to be able to write. That's how you are supposed to write it. However, some books, they can show that. Yes. So with this, our standards, we don't want you supposed to write the I the way it's supposed to be. So here you can see that you have three different alleles. That is A, B, and small i. Then you have four different types of blood groups. A, B, A, B, and O. So it means that all these ones are being controlled by these three alleles. These ones must combine to form these four blood groups. Then here is the table trying to describe what I've been trying to explain. So this is a blood group. Sometimes call it the phenotype. Is what we see. These are the alleles. Sometimes we call them uh, genotypes. Why? Because the alleles are genes. So genotypes is description of an organisms based on the, its uh, genetic composition. So you have A. You can be homozygous A or heterozygous A. You can be homozygous B or heterozygous B. You can be uh, codominant A, B, or you can be homozygous recessive or O. So this is homozygous dominant. This is also homozygous dominant because this is the dominant allele. And then O is a recessive. So it's a homozygous uh, recessive. So uh, make sure that you understand these concepts because they will ask you. So A is, if your blood group A outside, yes, we know that your blood group A, but genotypically, which kind of blood group are you having? Is it homozygous or it is heterozygous? So you need to understand those concepts. That's why you find out that a person of blood group A marries a person of blood group B, and then they produce a kid of blood group O. How is that possible? It is possible. And some people used to deny their kids, if they are their kids, that me, I'm blood group A. Yes, you're blood group A. The mother is blood group B. 
Yes, your blood group B. How comes that I have a kid of blood group O? It is possible. If I have a, a mother of blood group A, heterozygous, and a father of blood group B, heterozygous, I can produce blood group O. Why? Because this small eye, or the recessive eye, and a recessive eye from here, when they combine, they form two recessive eyes. Remember I say that you obtain these alleles from your parents, one from the father, one from the mother, and then you form your genotype. So it means that one eye from the mother, one eye from the father can have two alleles combining to form blood group O. So it is what? It is possible. So let's look at um, some of the problems. When we talk about problems, we look at uh, some questions of uh, blood group. Susan, with blood group A, with blood group AB, marries John with blood group, with blood group O. What will be the possible genotypes of their offspring? What could be the possible genotypes of their offspring? Then let's look at it. So in this case, you're supposed to find out what is the genotype, what's the phenotype and what's the genotype. So now um, you write P1, F1, yes. And then P1 means first um, parent, parent one. So meaning that the first generation. So it means that you're saying that always the phenotype is obtained from the question, always from the question. Look at the question, read it nicely, you'll find the, 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 the phenotype there. So you're saying that Susan of blood group AB, Susan of blood group AB, yes, Maris John of blood group O, Maris Cross, Cross means Maris John of blood group O. This AB is a heterozygous, has one option, O also has one option. So that one is, this question is just open for you, just to get marks for Mahala. So we are saying that, um, genotype, the genotype, because we know that uh, blood group A, blood group O looks like this, blood group AB looks like this. So these are genotypes. So you need to know the genotypes. So now we are saying that uh, the genotype of blood group AB is like this, the genotype of blood group O is like this. So these two, meiosis must take place. When meiosis takes place, so it produces what called the gametes. So meiosis must take place. You must write this one there. It divides these um, genotypes into two, two gametes. So we are saying that uh, the gametes are being formed. The first one is your blood group A, yes. Blood group B, yes. Blood group B is a from here and then B comes here. Then O, they divide O, they divide one from here and then one from there. So they form four of them. So after that, see, fertilization must take place. We must need it. We needed this. Fertilization takes place. When it takes place, you have now the allele. You have this, these two, you put them on top, and then these two, you put them down. Or here you can reverse them put these ones here put these ones here it still is the same thing you don't need to crack as long as one put them here one put them there yes so now this crosses with this because when i draw a line here and a line here yes it, it they meet here you see so now this and this you have a capital a small i then you have uh, this and this, we have I, capital B, and then small i. Then this, when I come here in this box, this, with this, so it's going to be capital A, and then small i. So it must be, you begin with a capital letter, and then you end with a small letter. So you have this and this, so you have um, capital I, small, capital B, and then small i. So uh, that is the, 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 the genotypes of the offsprings. So the first um, F1 generation of F1 uh, genotypes, F1 genotypes, you're going to have A, this one, and this one. These are the genotypes of F1. Why? Why, why, why not others? Because this and this is the same, so two of them, and then this and this is the same two of them. So basically you have the ratio is, is is one to one 
2 to 2, when you reduce it, it goes to 1 to 1. Then the ratio is 1 to 1. The genotype, the phenotype, though they didn't ask you, but you can write it. You have blood group A. Yes, this is blood group A. Don't say blood group A homozygous or heterozygous. No, we don't, we don't see the homozygosity or heterozygosity in, in a person. You can't see that unless you go to the genes. So what we see outside, it is blood group A. And what we see outside is blood group B. You don't need to describe what is inside. Just say blood group A, blood group B. And then uh, basically that's it. Now, now let's 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 look at uh, how do we mark. When you are marking, we come here. Sometimes there is a compulsory mark, so it depends on the examiner. So we are saying that um, P one F one. We give you a tick. We give you a tick there. They're saying that uh, meiosis paralyzation. The word meiosis and paralyzation, the two, just writing them, you get a mark, even if you don't have anything here. As long as you write them like this, you get a what? A tick. Then, it means that you don't forget to write them. Then you have a genotype, we can give you a tick. Yes, phenotype, you can give you a tick. See? And then writing the gametes, you can give you a tick. And then here, I also give you a tick. Yes, and then here you also give you a tick. So if it is out of five, and then for example, there is a compulsory mark, for example, or they say that yeah, according to the question, the genotypes, so you must write the genotypes. Yes, the genotypes, if that is the compulsory mark, even if you get seven, seven here, and you didn't write this, and the, the question is out of five, you get four. Why? Because you didn't get the correct answer of the compulsory mark. We first count the compulsory mark, then after that, then we can uh, count any other. So make sure that when you are writing, at least maximize, do whatever you, 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 all the steps, write all the steps, so that if the compulsory mark is there, you can get it. So this is the practice question. Let's look at the practice question here. Uh, it must be guided by the teacher. So the, now I'm your teacher. All right, Cabello, of blood group A marries Carabo of blood group B and they produced children of blood group O. Use the genetic cross to show the phenotypic ratio of their offspring. They want the phenotypes, so the phenotypic ratio. In this case, in this case, uh, what we are supposed to do is Go back to the table and see they say blood group A, marriage blood group B, produce kid of blood group O. I think I explained this. So it means that it's going to be heterozygous blood group A and the heterozygous of blood group B. Because when I try to cross them, they produce blood group O. Then you come back to the question. So it means that these, these parents, they were heterozygous to produce blood group O, which is a recessive. So now you have to do a, a genetic cross. P1, F1, uh, phenotype, then you, you tell us genotype, you tell us meiosis must take place to produce the gametes, fertilization must take place because now you have the gametes, you have the sperm and you have the ova. So now the, the, the fertilization must take place when they takes place, then you produce the offspring. The offspring will be genotypes, those genotypes then convert them into phenotypes and then find the how many are blood group A, how many blood group B, how many blood group A, B, and how many blood group O. Then they're saying that how many alleles controlling blood groups? How many alleles? We saw this one. How many alleles? There are three alleles. Blood group. Allele A, allele B, and then allele I, small i. Yes, we saw them. And then how many uh, blood group types do humans have? They have four. A, B, A, B, and O. Uh, basically, that's it. Uh, next class, we're going to be looking at the hybrid cross. Don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to attend this class. See you.